Despite the rumors, Fanatec is not dead yet, despite filing for bankruptcy. Be very careful what you read out there on social media. There's all sorts of clickbaity stuff following around it, like Fanatec's dead, etc., etc., etc. But it's not quite the end of the road just yet. Um, this is an evolving story. This is all information that has only just recently come out. We're going to take a little bit of a dive into the salient points to bring you guys up to speed, whilst also providing backed up references. So first of all, we're going to look at, does bankruptcy mean the end of a company? Short answer, no, it doesn't. They've just released a statement on their Instagram, which um, about an hour ago as of time of recording, which gives us a little bit of an update as to the events. Uh, the chief executive officer or the chief financial officer have just released a statement as of yesterday at 11 p.m. to the Financial Times with much, much more bigger insight as to what's going on behind the scenes and a bit of an update. This one's going to get juicy. Let's get into it. We're going to have fun. So the first question is, does filing for bankruptcy mean the end of a company? And just a simple Google search will tell you, no, it doesn't. These are just some examples from Investopedia. And the key takeaways highlighted by themselves are, filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy allows a company to restructure its debts. In some cases, companies are able to emerge from bankruptcy stronger than ever. And places like General Motors, Texaco, and Marvel Entertainment are three of the main companies that have emerged from bankruptcy successfully. You'll be surprised to hear that Apple filed for bankruptcy, General Motors, Chrysler, Marvel Entertainment, Texaco, you know, and if you delve into it, there's multiple, multiple examples throughout history. So, you know, does this mean you should kind of like sell all your Fanatec stuff because you're afraid that they're all going to go bankrupt? You're not going to get support or any service in the future? It might end up that way, but this is only the start of the journey, right? And they're a big company with a strong footing in the sim racing market, and it would be very foolish to count them out of the game just yet because there's, as I'll reveal a little bit later, even from Fanatec themselves, there are probably still some people who are willing to invest, okay? So this is an opportunity for people to invest, although there is a significant amount of debt. So let's move on to the Instagram statement. So as of time of printing, this was, um, this was released an hour ago. As of time of recording, it says, Dear Fanatec community, we have an important update to share with you. Our parent company, Endor AG, has entered insolvency proceedings with the Landshut Local Court due to financial challenges. Enter, end, oh, sorry, Endor AG's global subsidiaries remain unaffected by the insolvency filing. Our sales and customer support remain fully operational, and we are dedicated to the ongoing restructuring process. We are immensely grateful for the tireless efforts, blah, 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 blah. The company's passion for Fanatec remains the world to us. We are grateful to have dedicated fans. For further details, please check the Fanatec blog. Right, so arguably this is going to be an element of damage control. So this is just out on the social media in order to kind of like put down the fires because there's going to be all sorts of stuff being released, including stuff from me, you know, so this is arguably adding fuel to the fire as well, but hopefully balanced fuel to the fire with a little dash of water to douse the flames just a little bit. Um, but ultimately they're going to put out a statement like this. So even if stuff was exploding behind the scenes, right, okay, you, this, a, a statement of this sort of caliber would be expected. Now, if we want to delve a little bit deeper in, right, this is the statement released directly to Financial Times. Now, this is going to get a little bit heavy, but we'll go through it bit by bit. So, this again, this was released on the 30th of July at 11 p.m. It says that Endor AG files for insolvency. Reorganization according to the Star Rug has failed. Now, we've covered that extensively in previous videos. I'll leave links down below, but this was essentially a method to basically screw the shareholder over. And sell it to um, and sell it off to Corsair, right? We're creating maximal profits um, for the head honchos over Fanatec while screwing over the shareholders. Again, I'm dumbing down a fairly complex financial scenario, but that's that's the basic gist of it. Um, the shareholders obviously weren't happy with that. So behind the scenes, I do believe that Thomas Yakamai has been doing some bits and bobs, and they did call an emergency annual general meeting a couple of weeks ago. And this is sort of the back end of this meeting where obviously negotiations have have, have failed. So the Star Rug has now not been in implemented and it's now entered insolvency proceedings all right um so it says business operations will continue without restrictions great open-ended process to take over the company has started so that's a potential for future investors and foreign companies not affected by insolvency right so we'll just go through a little bit of this right so land should blah 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 endors ag's foreign companies are not affected by the application the attempt to restructure endor according to Starrug, has failed the reason for this was the request by the former ceo Yakamaya and majority shareholders to convene an extraordinary general meeting, okay, to prevent the reorganization of the Starrick, which is to be expected because these guys are about to be completely screwed out of every stock they own. So, you know, that's not surprising really. And if I'm honest, if I was a shareholder, that's probably what I would want to happen also, right? Because it didn't, didn't seem particularly fair at the time. 
Okay. Uh, so I said at the time, negotiations with the majority shareholder on a financial reorganization involved all shareholders have been taking place in recent weeks. Again, so the shareholder meeting was about three weeks ago or the first announcement of it on this page. Okay. However, these negotiations have broken down without result due to unrealistic demands, right? Again, I'll preface this. This is being written by the chief financial officer or the chief executive officer from Fanatec. So this is, again, this is a very one-sided tale of events. So you don't know what else is going on behind the scenes. Right, says the strategic investor Corsair then decided not to make any further payments from the bridge financing as the ongoing disruption, disruptions made reorganization under Starrug impossible. The lending banks have also rejected further financing due to over indebtedness. My understanding is Corsair at this point have pumped in four million into this so far. Okay, but as I'll reveal later, there's still possibility of Corsair taking over. The management board regrets that negotiations with the strategic investor Corsair, which were already at an advanced stage, could not be finalized. A further open-ended process to rescue the company is now being initiated as part of the insolvency proceedings with the aim of reorganizing the company and securing the Landschutz, and jobs. To be expected, right? So this is just an opportunity for people to invest, all right? So there is, I, I do believe that Corsair are probably still interested in this. The management board is confident that the company will be taken over by an investor. At the same time, the management board assumes that Corsair is still interested in acquiring Endor. Okay, so this could still mean a Corsair takeover, right? So they're just looking for people to fill that financial void. They're in a lot of debt, right? There's no hiding that, okay? So they need to get the money from somewhere. Um, but I think, you know, the fan Fanatec are a big player. I think the chances of them going underwater are very, very slim. Endor will continue its business operations. Okay, sales and warranties and repair services will continue without restriction and customers will continue to receive driver and software updates. Now, we do know that they have had their problems in the past, which means that's not necessarily the most reassuring statement. However, there are, you know, there are certain, some reports out there on social media that do seem to indicate that things have gotten a little bit better. So I do hope with this insolvency business and all the rubbish going on behind the scenes that the consumer experience is not effective because, you know, I am a long-term, let's just prove this, uh, uh, get off, uh, come on, uh. You know, I'm a long-term, you know, Fanatec supporter, right? All my, all my gears, Fanatec. God, I love that QR too. Um, so, you know, from a selfish perspective, I really hope they do sort of pull through this, all right? You know, so um, I, I, uh, I enjoy my Fanatec kit. Andreas Ruff, Chief Executive Officer of Endor, said, We would like to thank our customers, employees, and business partners for their trust and support over the past months. As part of the insolvency proceedings, we will continue the restructuring and work at full speed to reorganize the company. We are confident that we will emerge stronger from this situation and return to a sustainable, profitable growth path. Again, they're going to say this, aren't they? They're going to say, hey, guys, I think we're screwed. Right, let's, uh, let's all jump ship and you should sell all your stuff. Um, no, they're not going to say that. So, um, you know, take from that what you will. Okay, but again, it's nice that they're reassuring us. The management board sees the reason for the massive corporate crisis and numerous wrong management decisions in recent years. Again, a little pop at Yakamaya there, but, you know, there's no, no mistake that, you know, he has made some mistakes in the past. Examples include the oversized construction of the new company headquarters. It is big. I think it's got a go-kart track. Miscalculated chip and merchandising orders that led to high write-downs and failures to introduce processes and systems worth millions. Yes, it is. It's probably not the um, it's probably not the perfect story on how to run a company, but nobody's perfect, right? Anyway, last uh, last paragraph. Endor AG's bank debt rose to 70 million euros. Impressive by anyone's standards, particularly in the growth phase after 2020. In addition, there are high accumulated debts to suppliers and other business partners, as well as the necessary bridging loan from Corsair. As a result, the group's liabilities have now grown to more than 95 million euros. In view of annual sales of around 100 million euros, this led to over indebtedness and insolvency. Now, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how this all sort of plays out. Um, now, we know stuff's going to be going on behind the scenes, right? Thomas Yakamai has probably been a Hello. busy little bee, and we certainly haven't been made privy to everything. Now, we know before even the, as the Starrug thing was going on, he was gathering investors behind the scenes to basically save the shareholders. It's been very interesting to see how this develops over the coming months. Ultimately, I really want Fanatec to survive. I think they've been fantastic for the sim racing community. I wouldn't have gone into sim racing without Fanatec because they were really the only viable DD um, on the market at the time. So I jumped in straight at DD2. And you know what? Still going strong, still really happy with it. But more importantly, what do you guys think? Do you think this is all just smokes and mirrors? Do you think they're really going under? Um, I don't think so. I think there's a realistic chance they come out and somehow salvage it, be it from external investors or maybe Corsair ends up buying them. But I do think Fanatec will survive in some respect. I do personally hope that the shareholders get to keep their shares, right? That seems like a very fair thing, you know? Um, but again, the world of finance is not fair and it is cutthroat and ruthless. If you found value in this, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, and as always, take it easy, look after yourselves, see you soon.
Bye for now.